Hello and welcome to my Wireshark overview. In this video, we're going to be working with uh, the statistics portion. So again, the main objective for this video is just reviewing the statistics functionality of Wireshark. I am using a DEF CON Evidence 01 PCAP file, and that's what we're going to use to kind of go through some of our learning material. So let's jump into Wireshark and let's see what we can do. So a huge part of this is understanding that you already have at least a basic overview of how Wireshark works and understand basic navigation. So again, I've used my Evidence 01 PCAP and I went to statistics and we're just going to run through these statistics or at least the main versions of our statistics. So first one is capture file properties. These are going to be the properties of this PCAP. It will be its hash, the different hash values, the SHA-1, the SHA-256, the uh, packet capture time, the elapsed time. So this entire PCAP worked over a minute and 34 seconds. It will show you details on the packets that were here, the time span, the average packets per second. It will give you the details of the file. All right, so that's it for that. Statistics, if we go to the resolved addresses, these are going to be the predetermined address lists that Wireshark has. So when we're looking at specific MAC addresses, all of these are going to be the pre-populated MAC addresses that Wireshark is aware of. So these are pretty common throughout all Wireshark. So when you're doing like a name resolution, you're like, well, how does that happen? Well, most of the time, at least if they're using the OUI, it knows the manufacturer. So it will be in this list. Same thing with ports. Not all ports, but common ports are going to be listed here. All right, next we're going to go ahead and we're going to visit uh, protocol hierarchy. So it'll give you the drilled down version. So I'm actually going to go ahead and minimize a bunch of this. So we set, have our frame. Our frame builds into our Ethernet frame, layer 2. Our Ethernet frame, layer 2, builds into our layer 4 details. And here are layer 4 details, our combination of IPv4 and ARP, Address Resolution Protocol. Most people don't realize that ARP is a layer 3 protocol. IPv4, IPv6, ARP are all layer 3 protocols. So once we have that, we can look at layer 4 protocols. You'll notice with ARP, there are no layer 4 protocols. So that's just one of the things to know about ARP. With IPv4, we have UDP and TCP, or User Datagram Protocol and Transmission Control Protocol. And we can drill down to see which each one is. So here we have, out of the 91.7% protocols being IPv4, of that, 19.6% are going to be UDP. The other 72.1% are going to be TCP. And then of the UDP, we can see the breakdown. We can see that the bulk of this is the NetBio, uh, NetBIOS name service. But we can also see there is our NTP, our DNS. So we can see other protocols that are there. And under TCP, we can see the transport layer security and SSH and HTTP, as well as some data that was transmitted. So that's how we use our protocol hierarchy. And again, this is just an overview. I'm going to do more advanced videos diving deeper into this, but you can see at least the protocols. You can also see the data, how many bytes of data were sent, and which category they belonged to. So as we work through, we're just going to again work through the lists. All right, so we'll go back to statistics. We've did protocol hierarchy, conversations. So conversations are actually between two hosts. And you're going to notice we can sort by layer two, 
layer three or layer four. So we're just gonna run through all of them. So ethernet layer two, we can look at between this host and all the Fs, that's a broadcast. So we can send, uh, we can see they sent 25 broadcasts, A to B, and it was three total bytes. So how many beta, uh, bytes went from packet A or from host A to host B? How many bytes went from host A to B? How many packets went from B to A? And again, bytes B to A as well. And then we would run through each one of these. So we'll go ahead and pick just one random one. So in this example, 00127945A4BB communicated with 000C29B08D62. Total conversation length was 60 or 46 packets. Total byte size was 5 kilobytes. Packets going from A to B were 23. Responses from B to A, again, packet types, are going to be 23. That uh, 23 plus 23 equals your 46, so that all checked out. The byte data, how much data was sent. So how many bytes went from A to B? Well, there is two kilobits, uh, kilobytes, big B, from A to B. And from, so that, that's this guy right here. And then from B to A, there were three kilobytes as a response. So that two kilobytes plus three kilobytes equal our byte total. So that's how we use the conversation. So let's look at an IPv4. So if you get asked the question of, well, who was the, uh, what devices had the longest conversation? We can sort by bytes and we can go, oh, well, this one, 192.168.1.159 communicated with host B, 205.188.13.12. It sent a total of 47 bytes back and forth, equaling 31 kilobytes. Packet A, so the 192.168 address sending to the 205.188 address, sent 14 packets. And in response, so from 205.188.13.12 responded to 192.168.1.59 with 31 packets. 31 plus R16, that equals R47. How much data was sent? Normally, if we're talking the data amount, we're talking bytes. If we're talking how much traffic was sent, we could say packets. So there are differences between the two. Again, packets are how many individual packets went out. The bytes are how much data total was sent out. And again, for our bytes, 31 kilobytes. Of that, bytes A to B, one kilobyte. Bytes from B to A were 30 kilobytes. So this was more coming from the outside 205.188 address we're turning back to 192.168 address. So that's how we would read that. IBV6, if there is anything. And then again, we can also look at the conversations via the protocol. Here we have three separate conversations from our source, 192.168.1.159, going to use port, the source port, 1273, happens to be the source port normally doesn't matter as much as the destination port. So in this example, this communication went to a website using port 80. Destination port is 80, we know it's a website. In this example, destination port is 443, so we know that website is 443 or HTTPS. Here, again, realizing source port normally are going to be randomized, the destination happens to be port 5190. Most people don't know that, but that's AIM, AOL Instant Messenger. Other ports, uh, again, that is web traffic, port 80, that's HTTP, also web traffic, just not secured. And then we have port 22, that would be SSH. 
And then this guy is a response. So 64.12.25.91, it coming from port 443 and going back to port 1221, that's a response. Because again, we know that port 443 is a web, an HTTPS web request. So this is going to be a response for a packet that probably wasn't actually captured. Because we don't have any 1.2.1.6.8.1.59 that was on port 1.2.2.1. So that probably was captured before this PCAP actually went off. And then again, you can do the exact same review using UDP. So you're not stuck looking at one avenue. You can look at this through Ethernet, through layer three or layer four. You just have to state, hey, according to my layer three data, that'd be your IPv4 address, this is what I found. Or you can do based off of your layer four data. Hey, using layer four data, looking at TCP, this is the information I found. You can all look at these through different lenses. It's just a matter of what lens is most appropriate, and that's gonna be based off the questions that you're trying to answer. All right, so let's move on. All right, so let's go and move on. Let's go to statistics. Let's look at endpoints. So we can see our endpoints. So if the question is, how many endpoints do you have? Oftentimes we look at, well, the MAC addresses. Well, that only gives us a partial view of the story. Remember, if we are communicating with the internet or an outside network, the MAC addresses get dropped at our default gateway or our router. So we're not gonna have a complete view or a complete picture looking at layer two data. So for that, we need to look at layer three data. Because again, the default gateway is gonna trap or uh, drop the MAC addresses. So Wireshark is not going to capture the MAC address of a packet outside of our network. That's not its purpose. So here we have all of our layer three IP addresses. So we can see again, total packet sent, and we can sort based off of total packets. We can sort off of total data. You'll notice in this regard, the more the, the more noisier individual total packet sent was this 192.168.1.59. Second is this 192.168.1.158. But if we're sorting by data sent bytes, total bytes, the first one again is still that 192.168.1.159. But now the second most data sent is through, sorry, total data, not data, data sent, but total data is 205.188.13.12. I have to be careful here because it's not total data sent or received. It is total data, everything, sending and receiving. That is because TX, transmit packet, transmit data, received packets, received data. So we can sort by total packets, total data, sent packets, sent data, received packets, received data. So you can view this multiple different ways. You just have to kind of go through and state how you're viewing it. You can also view it via IPv6 if we had any IPv6. We could also then look at the layer four details. TCP or UDP, again, using the appropriate tab. What port numbers, how many packets, data, transmit, and receive. But again, because we are now looking at additional information, our IPv4 is gonna be broken down into groups using layer four details. Basically, TCP port number what? Here we have port 22 or SSH, we have port 80 for HTTP. We have three conversations using port 443. And then we have randomized source ports. That's an AOL, but these are all randomized. 
So we can see additional port details. And then again, we can also view UDP based off of the port number. Here we see a bunch of DNS. Here we have Active Directory components, so 137 and 138. So you can learn a lot through just the endpoints. Again, typically we look at the endpoints through the lens of IPv4, because if we look at it through our Ethernet, our default gateway is going to have the MAC address of all external IPs, because that's the interface that the packets are coming back in on, so that's the MAC address for those devices. Underneath statistics, we can also look at packet length. We can see how many packets are what total length. So if the packet was between 0 and 19 bytes, we can look at how many packets are there. Between 20 and 39 bytes, again, nothing. We can look at between 40 and 79 bytes. That one has the most amount of packets sent, averaging 61.58 with a minimum of 40, with a maximum of 78. And so you can look at the percentage here. We can look at the details. Again, with this, the goal is to look at how many packets are being sent in which packet length category. How many were jumbo packets? How many packets were above the traditional uh, 1,500 bytes? Average is showing 1454, with most of them being between 1395 and 1514 bytes. Again, this is just a way to look at the average uh, byte size and to figure out which category sent the most amount of data. All right, so that's it for our packet length. All right, so if we want to go more in depth, we can, but realistically, the top area is where you typically want to view your main areas. Normally, I don't cover IO graphs or service response time or any of the more advanced ones. I save those for much later videos, but we've at least covered file properties, uh, reserved addresses, protocol hierarchy, conversations, endpoints, packet length, and that's enough to get you started looking at some basic information within Wireshark. So use some of the tools, and if you have questions or anything, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, so in this video, we focused on looking at some basic portions of Wireshark statistics. Again, questions, concerns, anything, don't hesitate to reach out so that I can figure out what types of resources might best serve you. Thank you, and have a great day.